Corporations, LLCs, limited partnerships, using legal entities can help you help protect you and help protect your business. I'm here today with Stephen LaFaso of LaFaso PLC, a local attorney and an expert on helping small business owners protect themselves and save themselves money using, using legal entities. Uh, welcome, Stephen. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, LaFaso PLC? Well, thank you very much, first of all, for having me, Jamie. I really appreciate the welcome. opportunity today. Um, mostly what we do at LaFaso PLC is we help small and medium-sized businesses grow. Okay, um, Really, we help them with their entity formations and the tax consequences of those entity okay. formations. And as they start to grow their business, um, there's always the ability to change structures and change uh, tax you know, uh, right. classifications, and so what we do is we sit down with individuals and business owners and do a strategic plan to help map out the best course for their business. Great. Uh, okay, so, you know, I do have business owners who come and they say, well, hey, you know, and I've talked to them, I say, you know, you should consider an LLC to protect these assets and, and the way you're doing that or incorporate from that perspective, but, and they say, yeah, you know, we have insurance, we're fully insured, we have a great policy, we love our agent, you know, uh, and, and so if somebody sues us, they're probably going to pay if there's an accident, and, and that'll be fine. So, you know, what do you say to those folks? I mean, if you have insurance, does that mean, hey, you know what, I really don't need, uh, I really don't need to have, to be incorporated, I'm, I'm going to be protected? You know, uh, to be quite honest with you, insurance is a great thing, and I think everybody should get insurance, okay? Whether you are a LLC, a corporation, a sole proprietor, getting uh, liability protection for yourself, uh, you know, whether it's for errors or, error or omissions that you may make as a manager of a company, or for, um, you know, personal injury because an employee of yours or you yourself right. cause injury to somebody, that's great. But what the problem, unfortunately, with um, any type of insurance is, is that it does not uh, cover the basic breach of contract type issues that we were discussing earlier. Okay. Okay. okay? Um, basically, it will it will cover things like personal injury and stuff like that that we talked right. about. But if for some reason you're not able to perform on a contract, if for some reason um, you're not able to pay on a contract in some way or form, that insurance isn't going to do anything for you. You can't go to okay. your insurance agent and say, "Hey, I couldn't pay this fifty thousand dollars I owed this guy. Um, can you pay off on my insurance policy?" Right. It, the insurance policy, I'm guarantee you is going to exclude that payment. <laughs> okay. So with right. that said, um, that's why it's very important to, to incorporate or organize because if you do have that situation, um, then you are still, your personal assets are still protected. Right. And, and the, uh, you know, a good example, it used to be that if you were a lawyer or a, an accountant, you formed a partnership, right? Right. And the partnership was kind of like a sole proprietorship, except you had a couple people in it, right? And so my accounting and finance uh, professor, when I got my MBA, had been in a situation where he was in a law firm and one of the other lawyers got sued for something that you know, was not related even to the business and all of them ended up being liable and he ended up really, I, I, don't, I don't think he had to personally file bankruptcy but the partnership had to do so, and, and it really ruined him and really set them back from right. where they were. And, and, and that's the unfortunate thing. That's why a lot of people don't understand um, about it, uh, about the whole liability and the limited liability structure system, is that as a sole proprietor, you can go out there and get yourself insurance and really help yourself as far as any damage that may be done to persons or to property, but in no way whatsoever protects you from that unfortunate, uh, unforeseen circumstance where you cannot perform right. on, on, on an agreement that you have made. Okay, and, and all the entities that we talk about, whether it's a C corporation, an S corporation, an LLC, uh, limited partnerships, those all provide that level of liability, right? So there's not a whole lot of difference in which one you choose from that perspective. Is that correct? Yeah, is that, that, that is correct. There isn't a whole uh, bunch of difference between the liability aspect of it, whether you're a corporation or you're an LLC. Um, Partnerships, like we said, and also uh, sole proprietorships have unlimited liability uh, to the owners. Okay, right. um, really, the way you should look at a partnership more than anything for people, I always tell them, is that it's a sole proprietorship with more than one person, yeah. basically. So, so now you're not only liable for what you do, you're liable for what they do, they do as, as well. well. So you don't right. even double the risk, right? <laughs> and, and that's automatic. I mean, if you just say, hey, you know, let's go open a sandwich stand, uh, you're by law now a partnership. You formed a partnership, partnership and you're right. in it, so you don't file anything and it just kind of happens that that's way, right, right? And, and just like just like the sole proprietorship a partnership does not have to file any type of, of 
paperwork or documentation with the Virginia State Corporation Commission, which right. is the agency which oversees all entities in Virginia or all domestic entities in Virginia or, or even foreign entities doing business right. in Virginia. Um, if you and I, say for example, just decided that we wanted to start an ice cream stand and we just agreed among each other that we were going to do so, we automatically become a general partnership okay. regardless of, of, right. any, of whether we file documentation or not. Right. And uh, j one other question, uh, you know, one of the things, and I don't think this applies too much anymore, but people would talk about, hey, you know, you should be a Delaware corporation or a Nevada corporation. You know, why was that important, and is that still applicable, or should I just file in the state that I'm doing business? Um, you know, it, it depends in some senses. Back uh, definitely in the early uh, 20th century, the state of Delaware was seen as a very friendly state toward corporations and towards okay. incorporated businesses. A lot of the laws that were on the books um, as far as statutes and what the basics were um, on how a corporation had to be run were, were very favorable to the corporation. So that's okay. why a lot of people did it in Delaware. Um, and also kind of the organization and stuff like that is, is, is a little bit easier. Um, a lot of states now have started going to a lot of uniform okay. type systems. Right. And as such, it's made it so that it's not that difficult no matter what state you're, you're in. And those distinctions have really, as okay. time's gone on, has have, have really closed. And I think is Nevada the only state now, or maybe they don't e anymore either, that will protect your identity? Like I think most states have you, um, that you have to say, hey, who, this, these are the owners, and you have to kind of disclose that, but is it, is it, it Nevada? It, 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 it depends um, on what entity you choose. That's one of the things that is good, and, and, when, and you talk about deciding which entity you want to choose. A corporation, of course, is going to have to name officers. Um, the shareholders, you know, won't have to be named um, in the articles, but they have to name the corporate officers, and a lot of time in a small, closely held business, the president of the, of the corporation is also the sole shareholder of the corporation. Okay. Um, uh, an LLC, however, um, you don't have to name who your officers are. You don't even right. have to name who the members are. Okay. Um, anybody can organize it. So um, it's really out there that, yeah, it, it really can be protective of who really owns the business in that way. And that's something that in Virginia uh, they do. And so, um, you know, it's not Nevada exclusive. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, I just remember reading that there was something special about Nevada. So, Alyssa, any questions? I'm starting a business with a partner. Is there a specific organization we should use for that? Yeah, so we touched a little bit about that partnership aspect of it, but is there any one entity that you're not allowed to have partners or one that, that suits that better, or how, how do you kind of figure that out, especially if you're uh, kind of partnering up with somebody? And sometimes it's protect yourself from the other partner, right? right? You know, um, all these situations, we have to understand, are, are facts specific to the individuals who, okay. you know, are, are starting the business. Um, so basically, I think what the best thing you can do is kind of give a framework for that, okay? If you're starting with somebody else, um, like we said, a partnership, a general partnership is kind of the same idea of a, as a, you know, sole proprietorship, and that right. should be something that you should really try to stay away from. Um, some of the reasons people do pick it, though, however, is the ease of formation and also the ease of kind of uh, winding it down and terminating it, right. okay? okay? You don't have to file anything with the state. Um, you don't file anything when you start. You don't file anything when you finish. Um, you know, you can register with the state if you would like to, but you don't need to as a partnership. So it, it's real easy uh, to start and stop. Okay. Um, but then, once again, that gives you no liability, right? right? Um, mm -hmm. The other thing I think a lot of people like to do is, is do the LLC, a limited liability company, because it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. And that's what I suggest, especially for a lot of small and medium-sized businesses right. originally. Um, and the reason is basically is it gives you the limited liability, but it still gives you the flexibility um, to be able to get taxed either as an individual, if that's your best situation, or as general partners, or to get taxed as a S corporation, um, basically where you have um, your you have your profits flow through the entity right. to you, um, and you get that break on the self-employment tax, which we which we had talked about earlier, and we'll, right. I'm sure we'll discuss a little bit more. Good. So yeah, definitely. The, the, uh, so yeah, when you're going into business, certainly, you know, a lot of businesses, and I've worked with certain businesses who, you know, everything starts out, hey, we're all excited, opportunity hits, right. And then comes the discussion about who gets the next paycheck and, uh, you know, you have to put more money into it and those types of things. And so really if you're doing that, uh, even if it's your best friend or uh, even when I was in business with my brother, we formed a corporation, you know, yeah. and I trust him probably more than anybody. But uh, it's definitely a good idea to do that and, and set up some kind of organization, uh, even if it is your best friend, because 
business can be stressful. Yes, right? it, it certainly can, and, and it's quite amazing. What I tell a lot of my clients all the time whenever we sit down and do operational documents or bylaws, right. You know, um, I get a lot of from both sides. Um, if they chose not to get independent counsel and agreed to, to allow me to represent both of them, they'll say, "Well, we don't really care." And I, what I always tell them is, "You don't care now, but when the business that's falls <laughs> apart, that's when these documents become really or, important." Or even when it becomes yeah. successful, right? right? Even when it becomes wildly successful, and then there's a matter of, you know, bringing in other people and kind of yeah. So, so it's definitely a great idea. And one of the things that I talk to people about when they, you know. This isn't about, hey, how do you do it yourself? It's a matter of, as a business owner, being having the right management uh, capabilities and skills to go in and really know what questions to ask. Yeah. And I, saw, I tell people, when you go into your lawyer or you go into your accountant and you ask about legal entities, if they just say, oh, you should be an LLC or you should be an S corporation, and they don't talk to you about, you know, ask some really questions about where's the business going, how do you see your exit strategy panning out, do you plan on bringing on other people, okay. what's your current tax basis from a personal perspective. If they aren't asking those important questions, then uh, that's a good indication you need to go find somebody who, who can ask those, kind of <laughs> like you. And I know from our discussions that you're somebody who asks those questions. Okay. Well, we're about out of time. Uh, I want to thank you for, for coming on and you know, really helping us kind of clear that up. And I know we just touched the tip of the iceberg that, you know, as you get complicated with more businesses and, and more people involved, that this can be a very uh, interesting and <laughs> complicated thing that requires assistance. But, you know, certainly thanks for coming on. And, uh, you know, as we go through uh, what we're about here at Be Better at Business TV, TV is really helping people to be better at business. And hopefully today in looking at how you organize legally, will help you do that, help you save money, and help protect yourself. So thanks for coming on. Yeah.